So I have now cropped down to my image. I'm going to show you quickly how to crop down to your image. In Photo P, in Photoshop, I'm going to make it full screen just so you can see and not get distracted by anything else. And in order to crop down, I have to grow some image. So I'm going to make, make extra space that I don't want. All right. So here is my bigger sketch photo that I brought in. I turn off my guides. How do you make guides? You use your move tool, you click on the ruler, and you drag them down around the part of your sketch you want. Right? So we're only doing it from one sketch. So if you have a photo of multiple sketches, you want to use your guides to draw your boxes around the sketch you actually want to use. If you don't have rulers, hit Command R. Command R will show your rulers, whether you're in Photo P or Photoshop. Then you use the Move tool, which is the top tool in both Photo P and Photoshop. Click on the ruler. You can drag down guides. I want you to use guides because the Crop tool, which is both in Photo P and Photoshop, is a dangerous tool. It erases data. So I always recommend that you crop first by placing guides and then having your crop tool snap to the guides, which is the default setting. Once they are, you hit return, just like you're doing a transform command, and now all that data is lost. Then you're going to check your image size, whether you're in Photo P or Photoshop, the raster program, because you need to have enough pixels before you bring in your high quality reference. I'm making mine 11 inches by 16.543 inches to preserve the aspect ratio of my sketch. That's why we cropped it to that box. So I know the height and width. And my resolution is my lab resolution, which is 350 pixels per inch, 50 pixels per inch higher than standard minimum print resolution. So I know I'm covered. I have high quality pixels now. I just need to bring in my magazine pages. This is my sketch for my collage. This is the tricky part. Before I bring in my references, like I talked about the photos I took, the ones I got from Pixabay, the ones I got from Google Images, before I drag and drop them in, it would make sense to bring in the background first, right? I have to get off the crop tool because the crop tool is dangerous. Go back to the move tool. And before I bring them in, I actually want to give myself some space for them. Because look, if I bring that in, it just fills up the space. They're high quality pixels. But then if I bring in another one, it will just fill up the space. And they will stack up as layers, just like when we did our line art composite, but it makes it really hard to, to arrange them, right? So instead, I am going to create the desk space. What is the desk space? This is our image space. This is the piece of paper that we're printing, right? Mine's 11 by 16 inches by 350 pixels per inch. This is on my table at home to make my collage. Where do I put all my magazine pages that I want to cut out from? I don't put them on top of my paper. I put them around my paper. And then I grab one magazine page at a time, cut out what I want, put it on my paper. So I need to create that desk. So this is where I use canvas size. Keep your guides on, command semicolon in both Photo P or Photoshop, turn the guides on and off. And what you're going to do is now go to image canvas size, only after you've done image size. Canvas size creates a, your pixel space, not your resolution. So it already knows I'm 11 by 16 inches. I want to grow it from the center and create a desk all around it. And to make it really clear it's a desk, I'm not going to fill it with white. I'm going to fill this with gray, this background. And this works best on the background layer that you brought in with your sketch. What size am I going to use? I'm actually going to use a size that's handy to know as a professional in the, the visual communications world, and that's 30 by 40 inches, 40 inches wide, 30 inches tall because my landscape is wider than it is tall. 
30 by 40 inches is the largest paper size that you can use in a commercial printing press. I'll say that again. 30 by 40 inches is the largest paper size you can use in a professional commercial printing press. It means if you want to design a movie poster, a bus ad, a billboard, and you're using standard commercial high quality four color offset lithography printing like your textbooks, like your posters, like your album covers, like your children's books, the largest you can print any one image is 30 by 40 inches. If you want to make an image that's printed larger than that, you have to tile it for multiple prints that are no bigger than 30 by 40 inches. The only way to get billboards that are bigger than that, that aren't tiled and wallpapered together like they used to be, is to print them on, on canvas and to print them on inkjet printers that are low quality resolution that use bicycle chains, and we've done that since the 90s. So 30 by 40 inches is a good, it's what's called a printing plate. And if you make a children's book, if you make a comic book, if you made, make a pamphlet, and you want many copies of it, what they do is they fill up the 30 by 40 inch printing plate with all of your different page content. Because it doesn't make sense to waste a printing press plate. They each cost about $2,000 for each color, so you're going to fill it up. If you collect Yu-Gi-Oh cards, you can fit about uh, 120 Yu-Gi-Oh cards on one printing plate, at least one color of them, like the black layer. But we'll learn more about printing later. So that's where I get the 30 by 40 inches from. It gives me a nice desktop. Now I can drag in my elements, the ones I'm most excited about using. And I'm just going to drag them and then size them. Some of them are going to be so big, but they only need to be big enough to fit on my sketch because that's my print resolution. So I'm thinking that's going to go right there. But I'm going to put it off to the corner right now, hit return. And remember, it's a smart object. So until I rasterize it, I can make it any size I want, and it will refer to the original image file. I'm going to take my clouds, bring those on, and I only want them to be about this big, you know, in the background, probably even smaller than that. That's from my own photograph. So I'll put that off in that corner. Now moving forward from the background. Well, I have this transition from background starting into middle ground that I feel like can maybe even go behind these mountain peaks. But again, I don't need it very large. And but maybe I do want it to stretch across this kind of haziness. But I move it off. All the information's still there unless I crop it and rasterize it. What else do I want? Here, I'm going to make my view options a little bit bigger just so you guys can see. I don't recommend you do it on your own computer because it will really annoy you to have all of your icons this big. Then I'm going to group them by name just to keep them all together. Sometimes I'll mark them by color, like the ones I really want to use. I like this idea as a middle ground element, transitioning from mountains. But I need some of that transition, you know, into ground. I've got peaks. Now this is going to give me that transition into the ground. Put that off to here. And you can see how, to do a good job at this, you use a lot of layers, you take a lot of time. This is one of my smaller references. But that's about the size I'll want it to be. It will transition. And then, are there any other middle ground references? There's this one. Right? You can see that's the size it is. I can grow it a little bit. But now we're going into more of the foreground stuff. So I want that, that barbecue piece of meat. So I drag and drop it in. I want, I have a lot of individual cupcakes. I have this lollipop. I definitely want that as a foreground element. I bring that in. I kind of arrange them off to the sides. And they all come in as smart objects. So these are just like tearing out my 
magazine pages that are going to be most useful. And this one. And then let's get a few cupcakes as well. I had a cupcake tower. What happened to that? There it is. Boom. Nice. And then this tasty treat. So I've got a lot of options here. And I'm going for the really colorful ones. If I want it to be this kind of children's book, playful candy land. That's my concept. Some of the, the image references are bigger than others, but they are all big enough, at least a thousand pixels. So now when I zoom in, you can see that this pixel quality is really, really good. All right, now what do I do? I'm going to go to full screen again. Now I make sure I save it as a Photoshop file. So file, save as, because I have multiple layers now, the default will be as a Photoshop format. Remember, PSD stands for Photoshop document. You don't type in PSD, you let the computer do that. But this is our working format, so I save it. I always want to maximize compatibility. If you get this window, say don't show again, because why wouldn't we want to maximize its compatibility? Okay, now I've got my magazine pages, but I can only focus on a few at a time. They're all around my desk, so I'm going to turn these off, and I'm going to go to my background images, just like organizing layers in our first two exercises. You have to know what you're looking at, what you can affect. And I'm going to go to my furthest background layer, which is going to be this sky that I took a photograph of. I grab that, and I'm going to stretch it with free transform. Remember free transform? On Photo P, it was Option Command T. In Photoshop, it's just Command T. And you can get to it just like in Photo P by going to Edit, Free Transform. And it will show you the shortcut. On a PC, it's Control T. And if I want to stretch it, Rather than just grow it, I can hold down shift. And I want to stretch this in little ways. Clouds are organic. So I can squish them, and that's fine. Now, do I want the campus? No. But do I need to cut that out? No. Because this is the bottom layer of my collage. And the only layer you don't have to cut out is your first layer. Because everything else gets cut out and put on top of that. At the end of this process, I will crop it and, you know, clean up my edges, take out the desk. But for now, this is all my working space. And I might decide to make my landscape a little bit taller than my sketch. Okay, so now I leave that one. Now I'm going to go to my next layer and I'm going to position that on top. But how do I know how to position it? Well, I can turn off my mountain layer, or I can do what we did with our emoji, make a duplicate of my sketch, Command J, move it on top of everything else, and then take its opacity down, onion skin it. I'm just going to go to about 20%, and then lock it. So even though my images are at 100% underneath, I can see where I was thinking of having mountains mountain peaks. So then when I take this layer and move it in, I kind of know what size it needs to be. Then I hit return. And it's placed. The problem is it's a smart object, so I can't erase from it until I do what? I have to rasterize it. So how do I do that? I right click on the layer and I find rasterize. Only once I've made it the size I want. This is another way to do it, okay? which I think is more efficient for this. Instead of rasterizing it, I'm going to use my lasso tool, which is the third tool down. Do not use the selection brush. It's just a slower way to do the same thing. You just kind of paint what you want. I don't know why they've made that the top tool in this newest version. You want to go one down in the drawer just to the good old lasso tool. And what I want you to do is turn off your guides, 
so that they don't mess up your, your drawing. 